The Fred Harvey Company was the owner of the Harvey House chain of restaurants, hotels, and other hospitality industry businesses alongside railroads in the western United States. It was founded in 1876 by Fred Harvey to cater to the growing number of train passengers. When Harvey died in 1901, his family inherited 45 restaurants and 20 dining cars in 12 states. By 1968, when it was sold to Amfac, Inc., the Fred Harvey Company turned into the sixth-largest food retailer in the United States. It left behind a lasting legacy of good food, dedication to customers, decent treatment of employees, and preservation of local traditions. Topic history The company traces its origins to the 1876 opening of two railroad eating houses located at Wallace, Kansas and Hugo, Colorado on the Kansas Pacific Railway. These cafes were opened by Fred Harvey, then a freight agent for the Chicago, Burlington and Quincy Railroad, who emigrated to the United States from England when he was 17 years old. The café operation ended within a year, but Harvey had been convinced of the potential profits from providing a high-quality food and service at railroad eating houses. His longtime employer, the Burlington Railroad, declined his offer of establishing a system-wide eating house operation at all railroad meal stops, but the Atchison, Topeka and Santa Fe Railway subsequently contracted with Harvey for several eating houses on an experimental basis. In 1878, Harvey started the first of his eating house hotel establishments along the AT and SF tracks in Florence, Kansas. The rapid growth of the Harvey House chain soon followed. Fred Harvey is credited with creating the first restaurant chain in the U.S. Harvey and his company also became leaders in promoting tourism in the American Southwest in the late 19th century. The company and its employees, including the famous waitresses who came to be known as Harvey Girls, successfully brought new higher standards of both civility and dining to a region widely regarded in the era as the Wild West. The popularity of the Harvey Girls grew even stronger in 1946 when Judy Garland starred in the film version of Samuel Hopkins Adams's novel The Harvey Girls. Despite the decline of passenger train patronage in the U.S. in the 20th century with the advent of the automobile, the company survived and prospered by marketing its services to the motoring public. After 1926, Harvey cars were used in the provision of Indian Detours services offered from a number of Harvey hotel locations. The company continued to adjust to the trends. In the late 1950s it operated, for the first 15 years, the then new landmark Illinois Tollway Oasis which were built above the Interstate 294 Highway in the Chicago suburbs by Standard Oil of Indiana Amico. .The Fred Harvey legacy was continued in the family until the death of a grandson in 1965. Portions of the Fred Harvey Company have continued to operate since 1968 as part of a larger hospitality industry conglomerate. Before the inclusion of dining cars in passenger trains became common practice, a rail passenger's only option for meal service in transit was to patronize one of the roadhouses often located near the railroad's water stops. Fare typically consisted of nothing more than rancid meat, cold beans, and weak old coffee. Such poor conditions understandably discouraged many Americans from making the journey westward. The subsequent growth and development of the Fred Harvey Company was closely related to that of AT and SF. Under the terms of an oral agreement, Harvey opened his first depot restaurant in Topeka, Kansas in January 1876. Railroad officials and passengers alike were impressed with Fred Harvey's strict standards for high-quality food and first-class service. As a result, AT and SF entered into subsequent contracts with Harvey wherein he was given unlimited funds to set up a series of what were dubbed eating houses along most of the route. At more prominent locations, these eating houses evolved into hotels, many of which survive today. By the late 1880s, there was a Fred Harvey dining facility located every 100 miles along the AT and SF. AT and SF agreed to convey fresh meat and produce free of charge to any Harvey house via its own private line of refrigerator cars, the Santa Fe Refrigerator Dispatch, and in them food was shipped from every corner of the U.S. 
The company maintained two dairy facilities the larger of the two was situated in Las Vegas, New Mexico to ensure a consistent and adequate supply of fresh milk. When dining cars began to appear on trains, AT&SF contracted with the Fred Harvey Company to operate the food service on the diners, and all AT&SF advertising proclaimed Fred Harvey meals all the way. Harvey's meals were served in sumptuous portions that provided a good value for the traveling public, for instance, pies were cut into fourths, rather than sixths, which was the industry standard at the time. The Harvey Company and AT&SF established a series of signals that allowed the dining room staff to make the necessary preparations to feed an entire train in just 30 minutes. Harvey houses served their meals on fine china and Irish linens. Fred Harvey, a fastidious innkeeper, set high standards for efficiency and cleanliness in his establishments, personally inspecting them as often as possible. It was said that nothing escaped his notice, and he was even known to completely overturn a poorly set table. Male customers were required to wear a coat and tie in many of Harvey's dining rooms. The Harvey houses served many a meal to GIs traveling on troop trains during World War II. This mutually beneficial relationship, characterized as one of the most successful and influential business partnerships in the early American West, endured until 1963. Topic facilities for the Southwest, Harvey hired architects Charles Whittlesey and Louis Curtis for influential landmark hotels in Santa Fe and Gallup, New Mexico. The Grand Canyon was the Santa Fe's main tourist destination and a major activity of the Harvey Company. The rugged, landscape-integrated, and culturally appropriate design principles there influenced a generation of subsequent Western U.S. architecture through the National Park Service and Civilian Conservation Corps structures built during the Great Depression and after. The Harvey team, with the backing of the Santa Fe, created an entire set of cultural images based on the region's distinctive, and often overlooked, artistic traditions of the Native American residents and the early Spanish settlers in the area. Especially noteworthy were the buildings on the south rim of the Grand Canyon, including lodges, souvenirs shops, and special lookout points, today on the National Register of Historic Places. It has been suggested that the Harvey Houses originated the Blue Plate Special, a daily low-priced complete meal served on a blue patterned china plate, and 1892 Harvey menu mentions them, some 30 years before the term became widespread. In addition to the AT&SF, the Harvey Company operated dining facilities for the Gulf Coast and Santa Fe, Kansas Pacific, St. Louis San Francisco, and the Terminal Railroad Association of St. Louis Railways. AT&SF maintained and operated a fleet of three passenger ferry boats that connected the railroad with San Francisco by water. Ships traveled the eight miles between the San Francisco Ferry Terminal and the railroad's Point Richmond Terminal across the bay. The service was originally established as a continuation of the company's named passenger train runs such as the Angel and the Saint. The larger two ships, the San Pablo and the San Pedro, each featured a newsstand lunch counter located on the main deck, and a dining room on the upper deck. Meals, sandwiches, sweet rolls, pastries, and coffee were served. AT&SF discontinued ferry service in 1933 due to the effects of the Great Depression. <laughs> Harvey Girls In 1883, Harvey implemented a policy of employing a female, white-only serving staff. He sought single, well-mannered, and educated American ladies, and placed ads in newspapers throughout the East Coast and Midwest for "...white, young women, 18 to 30 years of age, of good character, attractive and intelligent." The girls were paid $18.50 a month, plus room and board, a generous income by the standards of the time. The women were subjected to a strict 10 p.m. curfew, administered by a senior Harvey girl who assumed the role and responsibilities of house mother. The official starched black and white uniform which was designed to diminish the female physique consisted of a skirt that hung no more than 8 inches off the floor. Elsie. Collars, opaque black stockings, and black shoes. 
The hair was restrained in a net and tied with a regulation white ribbon. Makeup of any sort was absolutely prohibited, as was chewing gum while on duty. Harvey girls as they soon came to be known were required to enter into a one-year employment contract, and forfeited half their base pay should they fail to complete the term of service. Marriage was the most common reason for a girl to terminate her employment. The restrictions maintained the clean-cut reputation of the Harvey girls, and made them even more marriageable. However, the opportunity to leave their homes, to enjoy travel, have new experiences, and work outside the home was very liberating for thousands of young women. After the Harvey houses closed in most cities, many former girls and today their daughters and granddaughters joined in appreciation to carry on their legacy. In a mythology that has grown around the Harvey houses and Harvey girls, these female employees are said to have helped to civilize the American Southwest. This legend found expression in The Harvey Girls, a 1942 novel by Samuel Hopkins Adams and in the 1946 MGM musical film of the same name which was inspired by it. Topic dining car service Harvey initially balked at the suggestion that in-transit dining facilities be added to all AT&SF trains operating west of Kansas City. Eventually, Harvey agreed to support the railroad in this endeavor, and the California Limited became the first AT&SF's named trains to feature Harvey Company meal service en route. Later trains, such as the vaunted Super Chief, included dining cars staffed by Fred Harvey Company personnel as part of the standard passenger car complement right from the outset. Topic Select Harvey Hotels and Facilities A list of some of the 84 Fred Harvey facilities, the Alvarado, Albuquerque, New Mexico, closed in 1969, demolished the Bisonti, Hutchinson, Kansas, closed in 1946 the Casa del Desierta, Barstow, California, closed in 1959, refurbished 1999, operating as two museums and city offices the Hotel Castañeda, Las Vegas, New Mexico, closed in 19 1948, used in the 1984 film Red Dawn, purchased for restoration April 2014 El Garces, Needles, California, closed in 1958, restored in 2014 El Navajo, Gallup, New Mexico, demolished 1957 Harvey House, Union Station, Los Angeles, designed by Mary Coulter, built in 1939, closed in 1967, restored by CEDD Moses's 213 Hospitality Group and reopened as the Imperial Western Beer Company and Streamliner Bar in 2018 El Ortiz, Lamy, New Mexico, closed in 1938 El Otero, La Junta, Colorado, closed in 1948 El Tovar, Grand Canyon, Arizona, still in operation El Vaquero, Dodge City, Kansas, closed in 1948 The Havasu House, Seligman, Arizona, closed in 1955, demolished 2008 The Escalante, Ash Fork, Arizona, closed in 1948, demolished in the 1970s The Fray Marcos, Williams, Arizona, the site is now the Grand Canyon Railway Hotel, designed to resemble the century-old depot that housed the original Fray Marcos La Fonda, Santa Fe, New Mexico, acquired by the Santa Fe Railway, leased to Fred Harvey in 1925, in operation, different owners Los Chavez, Vaughn, New Mexico, closed in 1936 La Posada, Winslow, Arizona, closed in 1957, restored and reopened as a historic hotel the Sequoia, Syracuse, Kansas, closed in 1936 the Slayton Harvey House, Slayton, Texas, opened in 1912, restaurant closed in 1942, remained train depot before closing, went into disrepair and was to be demolished, was saved by a few locals, renovated, and reopened, currently in operation as an event center and bed and breakfast. Topic separation from AT&SF Beginning in the 1930s, the Fred Harvey Company began expanding into other locations beyond the reach of AT&SF, and often away from rail passenger routes. Restaurants were opened in such locations as the Chicago Union Station, the largest facility operated by Harvey, San Diego Union Station, the San Francisco Bus Terminal, and the Albuquerque International Airport. The last of these was established at the Los Angeles Union Passenger Terminal in 1939, and could accommodate nearly 300 diners. 
From 1959 until 1975, the Fred Harvey Organization operated a series of restaurants in the Illinois Tollway Oasis, a set of highway rest stops built on bridges over the tollway. In 1966, Fred Harvey purchased the Furnace Creek Inn, near Death Valley National Park, from U.S. Borax in 1966 after operating it for a decade. The original Fred Harvey Company, as well as the company's close affiliation with AT&SF, lasted until 1968 when it was purchased by the Amfac Corporation of Hawaii. Amfac was renamed Zantara Parks and Resorts in 2002. In 2006, Zantara purchased the Grand Canyon Railway and its properties. See also Atchison, Topeka and Santa Fe Railway and its passenger train service Dining aboard the Super Chief Blue Plate Special Van Noy Railway News and Hotel Company Harvey House in Florence, Kansas <laughs>